We're the Pennsylvania Municipal League, and our mission is to strengthen, empower, and advocate for effective local government. We're furthering that mission here this week. We're uh, providing a lot of professional development opportunities. I think bringing some great sessions and uh, opportunities for people to take back to their communities some of the best practices that are going out, on out there in the municipal world in Pennsylvania. Uh, I want to welcome you again to our 120th annual summit, which is uh, a great accomplishment for this organization. Uh, it's a milestone. It's an uh, opportunity for us to get together and talk about all of the uh, solutions we have. We don't talk about problems, we talk about solutions. I certainly think most of our folks are concerned about uh, rising costs and how do you comply with those, how do you, you know, compete with those and make sure that you've got the revenues associated to support the quality of life services that you want to provide to your community to make, make, make it better a place to live. And that's always a challenge is to make those numbers work. Certainly from an issue standpoint, of course, public safety uh, continues to be a great challenge in many, many areas. Crisis management, uh, the you know ongoing uh, issues about uh, gun violence uh, in uh, many areas, not only in Pennsylvania, but across uh, the country. Clean air, clean water, climate change is a significant issue uh, in Pennsylvania and many of our locales. And so these are the great issues of the day. And the people making the most uh, action and, and, and the greatest gains are generally going to be local government. Binding arbitration is something that's imposed on us as, as our folks um, go through the process with their public safety uh, personnel. And sometimes those costs and what can be awarded through that process can be significant. And the elected officials, the folks that the voters have trusted to make the best decisions for that community, have no say in that. It's imposed on them and they must pay. We'd like to see some changes to that, but it is a, a big issue in, in municipal world in Pennsylvania. Well, Act 111 has been around a long time and it hasn't been changed, so we're trying to get it changed so that it's a level of playing field between us, the municipal government that has to pay for the uh, police and fire, and just level it out. I mean, we're not looking to hurt anyone, we just like to level the, play, level the playing field. What kind of a financial pressure does that put on municipalities in Pennsylvania? Well, local municipalities don't have an opportunity to decide and determine how much money they have to pay their employees, so it goes to binding arbitration. And usually the binding arbitrators always side with the unions and give you know hefty raises. How does that impact a, a municipalities' efforts to be able to deliver basic services? Well, for example, in my own city in Easton, um, police and fire are now well beyond the... Uh, um, it's 60% of my budget and it's well beyond the property taxes that we collect. Normally, the way you look at a municipal government is property tax usually covers your public safety. Public safety is not covered by any property tax in any city. For a long time now, we've been promoting changes to the uh, municipal pension plan statutes. We do have a bill this year that we think could be could help many of our municipalities stem those costs going forward. I mean, what we want is sustainability with pensions. We understand that uh, pensions are, are a big issue for all of our personnel, and we want to provide them with the appropriate pensions. But we also make it affordable, and we want to make it sustainable, and not have surprises when the market changes. It's got to be something that's uh, some more systemic changes would be helpful. And pension reform is something we've been trying for for 30 years. It's not going anywhere. Uh, we we think we. We can get something closer this year and we're again we're not trying to hurt police or fire but they're you know when you have a, a police officer or a firefighter retiring at 20 year 30 years with with a better than eighty thousand dollar a year pension it's not sustainable uh, all we want to do is to try to provide something that's sustainable even if this community has to pay social security for that person while they're working at least when they retire they'll have a pension and social security it'll be easier on the taxpayers Norristown has had over the last few years uh, an issue with the high cost of pensions. We are trying to fund it and budget it every year, but as it increases every year, that gets more and more difficult. So we have been trying to use unique ways of funding it by reaching out to organizations that help with the um, learning of how to fund it, uh, different ways that we can come up with that's going to increase our pension. Currently, our fire department uh, funding for the pension is, is pretty much on track uh, with where we need to be, but our police 
uh, is underfunded and we are having a difficult time with that. That is certainly a, a factor and it is a factor that we definitely need help from Harrisburg to address in a fair and equitable way to uh, make sure that we are um, honoring the service of the men and women who've served our communities for many, many years, while also addressing uh, the rising costs, especially related to health care. As costs rise, it takes away resources from other very important things that we want to do. In fact, it actually takes away from our ability to hire new employees, and therefore it's not impacting the community in a positive way. When any cost keeps going up and feels out of control and unfunded, you have to look for the funds somewhere. I'm from Moon Township, Allegheny County, Pennsylvania. Our pension costs in the year is about over a million dollars. We have about 30 full-time police officers, public works and administration, 85 full-time employees. Um, that's about a half a mil to, to mil point two five for us. So uh, that cost every year increases, uh, state aid decreases. Um, employee contributions are pretty high. We have an 8% employee contribution. So it affects us uh, roads, any other services, recreation, parks that we need to make up um, with the pension. We, we can't offer these services to our residents. And it's hard to justify a tax increase to cover uh, benefits, employee benefits. It hurts our economy uh, being in an urban uh, community. Um, it hurts everything. It hurts the school district. It hurts uh, economic development in uh, urban towns where uh, we're trying to get ahead of it, but unfortunately it just keeps doing the same old thing. So uh, hopefully uh, the attorney um, De Pasquale uh, definitely uh, gets something together to make sure that we can finally do something about that pension problem. It's a top priority. It's, it's how do we expand our tax base? How do we, again, um, uh, have our revenues grow so they can keep up with inflationary expenses? It's a huge issue, and everybody's looking to provide, find that niche in their community that makes sense, that can foster economic and community development and allow, allow those things to occur and make it a place that people want to invest. Revitalizing our communities is something that um, all of us in local government should be striving for. Um, you know, we, we all have um, abandoned buildings uh, or blighted properties, and I think it's crucial and it's critical to uh, be able to find developers and to find businesses who want to um, bring those buildings back to life and, and move their businesses into those buildings uh, because, you know, we have to grow our tax base and uh, cities like Altoona, we don't have a lot of uh, land that's able to be developed still, so we have to make use of, of the existing buildings and, you know, there's a lot of character to those buildings and uh, um, so, yeah, that's revitalizing communities is, uh, is, is crucial and vital to, to our, our, our cities. That's really important and that's one of the areas that we really are looking, are delving into to make sure that we do that. Uh, economic development is another uh, area that we're looking at as well. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to have the courthouse start, so that's one of the positive things that the city of Harrisburg is doing as well. Pension problems and economic development uh, within the Norristown area, just like everybody else, um, one of the things that we look at is to tr how we can get funding and um, developers to come into our town and, and build up our town and uh, to make uh, the tax base come lower and and, and do some things that we have, we're behind in, in for 20, 30 years. Good schools are a big issue in every community. Uh, folks don't want to, if you're a young family, you want to live in a place where you know you're going to, even though you might like the community, it, the schools also have to be commensurate with that community and they have to, uh, you have, the place you, you want to live has to have a good school. So we certainly have always uh, uh, been a proponent of appropriate school funding levels so that we can see our school districts thrive. People don't move to cities or, or any community that doesn't have good public education. Quality public education is still the number one thing that parents look for when, they're, when they have to relocate. So we, we're, we're proud of all the um, school districts in Pennsylvania, but some are doing better than others because, again, that playing field isn't level. You have some very, very wealthy school districts and some very, very poor school districts. Kids should not be hampered in education and the quality of that education by where they live. 
We in the school district of Lancaster, I'm a proud public school parent. My daughter goes to our school district and I am an advocate for uh, fair funding formulas which uh, would dramatically affect uh, our particularly low income and fixed income residents uh, ability to stay in their homes long term. So that has a huge impact on the future of our cities. The tax base is very stagnant in much of Pennsylvania and as we dedicate resources to, to schools and to other important educators educational institutions, it takes away from our ability to fund other important services like police and fire, which are just as important to the future of our communities. The, the public education definitely attracts people to live there if you have a strong education system. But I know that they have a hard time raising enough funds anymore because we have a decreasing population. And so the tax base erodes along those lines. Same thing with uh, developing the neighborhoods. And, you know, so you really want to be a good place to live and provide all those basic services. We believe in local government autonomy. We cede autonomy for gain. What we've seen is more and more uh, attempts to preempt local government's inherent rights, like zoning uh, and, and code enforcement and those things. We, uh, their ability to uh, enact bans on certain materials, all those things are, we we're looking at those things getting preempted, and we don't think it's a good thing. We think people, uh, local governments are most responsive to the constituents, and they ought to be able to make their own decisions what's best for their community. Preemption of local government is just, it's just stupid. Uh, I, I'm, I can't say it any better. State legislature is, is just going down the wrong path. I mean, they, I guess they think we have stupid written on our forehead by local government officials, but we know best what's best for our, our communities, our people know what's best for our communities, and the state should stop regulating, especially when it comes to zoning issues. Uh, they're trying to preempt us on zoning issues, and, and that's just not right. Local communities should determine what local communities can do and not do. It's local, uh, with the state level, I don't think they're their heart and their interest is not in, in each and every municipality or borough township. At a local level you have those who are have a vested interest because they live in those cities and they know the everyday workings, what's going on and they know the people. One of the things that I really want to do is see us um, be able to get some of the uh, legislation that PML has been supporting uh, across the finish line in, in Harrisburg and uh, probably the, the biggest one would be the local use of radar. Um, that's something that we as the league have been really uh, fighting for for the past uh, few sessions now in Harrisburg and uh, that's really uh, probably the biggest, the biggest uh, legislation that I would like to see us be able to um, get, get passed. In Easton, we went to Home Rule Charter because it gives us a little bit more flexibility. If the state's not going to give us flexibility, we've got to go to our own local residents to give us flexibility. Flexibility, again, you have uh, cities of the first and second class, Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, who have a whole array of um, revenue producing or revenue enhancement that's not costing your taxpayers, maybe costing your visitors or, or drink tax or something. We can't do that in cities of the third class. All the other cities are cities of the third class. We can't do that. Give us the flexibility, again, the state doesn't have to tell us what the tax are. They don't have to take the burden. Let us do that. We're, we're willing to accept the blame or the burden of levying taxes, but let us determine what is best type of tax for our community. The wireless um, telecommunications efforts that are being um, put forth um, in the, across the nation and in Pennsylvania, um, this legislation would preempt local zoning as it stands now, and it's very important that House and Senate members know that this is of great concern to local government. We, have, we need to be able to preserve zoning to make sure that the poles and antennas that are needed for the wireless infrastructure are going where local officials and the community feel they best should go. Another issue is post-traumatic stress injury for first responders. This is very important in terms of making sure that first responders that need assistance get it, but also that the bill is narrow enough that it's, go that it's not going to be um, overly expensive to local government and eventually taxpayers and most likely hurt uh, first responders and communities if all of their um, funds are going to pay for the premium for this, in for this benefit. We are continuing to push the bipartisan Restore Pennsylvania proposal. I've been traveling around the Commonwealth visiting communities as Secretary of DCED for almost five years now. And I continue to hear that communities are struggling with the same challenges that they faced for years, and in some cases, decades. 
I've heard that blight is threatening the health and safety of our neighborhoods. I've seen it firsthand. Flood protection is lacking. Flood damage is forcing communities to deal with overwhelming repair and restoration costs at a time where modeling predicts rain totals will only continue to increase. Many components of Pennsylvania's transportation infrastructure have been neglected, particularly our four-digit state roads and back roads in our public transit systems. And lack of access to high-speed internet hurts our children's ability to learn, our teachers' ability to teach, hurts doctors and emergency personnel's ability to provide health care, and hurts our businesses' ability to market themselves and conduct business online. It also hurts the ability for us to attract young people into this state in certain areas. It is critical that we upgrade our uh, high-speed internet to the uh, extent that we need to. These hinder economic and community development in Pennsylvania like uh, never before. That means less opportunity for residents and workers to grow and thrive, yet there aren't enough resources at the state or federal level to make meaningful headway into fixing these issues. Communities are left with nowhere to turn. That's why the governor's proposed Restore Pennsylvania, a $4.5 billion proposal to bring the Commonwealth into the 21st century and provide our communities with the resources they need to fix decades-old problems. Restore Pennsylvania will bring high-speed internet access to every Pennsylvanian, remediate blight across the state, protect our communities from flooding, and rebuild our transportation and green infrastructure. And it's funded through a common sense severance tax. This severance tax will not affect the impact fee at all. It will not affect the impact fee one dollar. Meaning communities using the impact fee won't have to worry about that revenue being taken away. It'll still be in place. It also won't affect royalty payments. So landowners shouldn't worry about seeing a drop in revenue from royalty payments either. Most of all, Restore Pennsylvania will be driven from local needs, by local needs. This is designed to be a bottom-up program, not a top-down program. It's our fundamental responsibility as state government to help our communities with these critical infrastructure issues, and Restore Pennsylvania is really the only way that we can tackle that, uh, all of those issues at one time. Legislation was introduced in the previous session, and we're going to continue to work with the legislature to get this legislation passed into law. It is that critical. I believe if Restore Pennsylvania passes, it's going to be a transformative moment for this Commonwealth. Our communities will be healthier, healthier safer, and will have a greater ability to generate revenue and provide for our local residents. We're promoting the Restore P Pennsylvania proposal from Governor Wolf, and it's to reinvest in our communities, um, infrastructure, broadband, flood prevention, resiliency, um, address some of the most urgent needs in our urban and rural areas. It would benefit communities because right now we're so dependent on real estate taxes and the budgets in all of our munis municipalities are strained just providing everyday services that are sore and water and infrastructure, our broadband has lagged behind and it would let us reinvest in stuff that hasn't been invested in in decades. As a former mayor and past president of uh, PML, what would this mean for communities across the state? It would mean, you know, broadband for kids and so they can do their homework when they get home from school instead of on the school bus or going to the sheet store for Wi-Fi. It would mean new sewer and water projects. It would mean revitalization. In many ways we are living in some of our greatest times, but there are some incredible challenges that our young people face. Look, we've all had it tough at some point, but the social media culture that is impacting so many of our young people today can be devastating to so many. Look, we all had a time when we weren't invited to a high school party or something like that, and we can chuckle about that, or somebody wrote something bad about you on the bathroom wall or any of those things. I'm not saying any of that was okay. Our kids today have to deal with people posting that stuff on Facebook and Instagram, and they see the party on Facebook Live that they weren't invited to. They see the things that people comment on, particularly the horrible things that are say to, said about young women and physical appearances and what they are made to believe is the ideal what, that we all know is not. So as a society, we have to come to grips with it because so many of our young people today, one out of every 
10 teenager, one out of every 10 has contemplated suicide. One out of 10. That's horrifying. So for all of us, these things impact, yes, cities, boroughs, and towns, but they impact our, our greater society. And so as I spend the next year and a half coming to the end of my two terms as your Auditor General, these are some of the issues that I'm going to be working on. And people say, what's that have to do with being the Auditor General? Look, we audit all of these programs. We audit their effectiveness or lack thereof. When it came to opioid addiction, we did a thorough audit of all the state's drug rehabilitation programs. And we found the state was doing a better job of spending money on it, but not getting a bang for our buck. So those are some of the issues that I'm going to continue to advocate for over my next close to year and a quarter remaining in office. And I want to continue to work with you and the other legislative allies we have on municipal pension reform because I will continue to say it until the Constitution kicks me out as Auditor General. This is the missing financial piece to make sure that our cities can take off like a rocket ship. <clears throat> because you cannot, we all know public safety is an issue. You can't hire the additional police officers if we don't fix this. You can't pay for the fire truck if we don't fix this. So we have to fix it or the other issues will continue to linger. People want now to move to the cities, boroughs, and towns. I know my son's a sophomore in college. They don't care about owning it. Like when we were younger, you wanted to buy the car. and all. That's not what interests them today. They want to be in the cities, but we've got to make sure that we're able to keep the taxes down and make them safe. And how do you do that? Fixing municipal pensions is the way to do that. So let's continue to fight to make sure that we get common sense reform there and also continue to work on the other issues that you continue to advocate for here and across the Commonwealth. Thank you very much. Let me look you in the eye and say you are going to face some kind of high stakes, perhaps life or death challenge. Maybe not you per se, but one of you in the proverbial sense. They are the probabilities. And so when John asked about would I come out and talk a little bit, I said happy to. I, I have great regard and appreciation for what you do on an everyday, every minute basis. I look at the program, friends. You know what this program says? It shouts at you. It shouts at you. Are you ready? Topically. Secu cyber security. Communications during high stress moments. How's your fire department doing? They're key first responders. My dad once said to me, I cannot imagine you doing a good job without the key people in the, in the municipal apparatus you know, ambulance, fire, and PD, not believing you've got the right perspective. You've got to nail that constituency down first. I believe that, by the way. I still believe that to this day. I hope you do, too. And I bring this up because this, this agenda screams at you. And this is why, as professionally dedicated folks, we gather. Are you ready? Is your government ready? When you have 20 inches of snow on the ground, it's really not a Democrat or Republican problem. You can't make a speech and move the snow. Your people move the snow. Your government moves the snow. We interact with people at a level, which is the beauty of the Pennsylvania Municipal League and why I love local government, because we have to get stuff done every day. It's not like we deliver water service on Monday and fire service on Tuesday and books and uh, schools for children on Wednesday and then we give you something else on Thursday and kind of take Friday off because, you know, people, of course, think we take Fridays off. <laughs> we deliver services every day, all day, to everyone, all across the city, the county, the borough, whatever the level, township, whatever the level of government is. But that's why I love local government, because we have to perform. And people have expectations, and they have a right to certain expectations. I'm sure no one in here has been reminded by any of your citizens that they pay your salaries. I'm sure that's never come up in any conversation. I'm sure that's just a Philly thing. And they do. 
And they have a certain right of expectation about whether the water will be clean or the traffic signals will work or will there be lights at night, recreation for their kids, and again, coordination between and among all of us. Well, this is the Pennsylvania Municipal League Summit in, in Gettysburg, our annual summit. And for the last 10 years, we've been building a playground, partnering with the local community and other sponsors and building a playground for kids. Sort of like leaving our mark on this every city we've been to in the last 10 years. A lot of volunteerism, uh, helping Gettysburg build a park in their uh, rec park area. And uh, just, it's, it's interesting. And, you know, making sure it's level and putting everything together. With all this help, it can do it in, a, in a, one morning. I think uh, this really shows the dedication of all the volunteers to be out here in the rain, tr really working hard to make sure that this, this playground gets finished today. Uh, this is going to be a great, uh, a great addition to all the residents here in Gettysburg and I'm sure it will get a lot of use in the future. I think this is a really uh, awesome thing that we do with PML. Um, it's kind of kind of like uh, leaving leaving our mark on, on every community that we visit every year with, with the summit. We think having these recreation opportunities uh, in all of our members and contributes to the quality of life and, and really makes a, a better community and we're so glad to be part of it. But this has been a great group to work with and obviously we're ready to go as we came today and had all the parts numbered and, and everybody just kind of coordinates and go from there. So we're making great progress, but it does take a lot of upfront work for sure. Uh, helping lift some things here and there. So uh, we've, had a, we've had a good group working this. We have lots of partners. Uh, the GARA is involved, the Gettysburg Area Recreational Authority, uh, the Pennsylvania Municipal League, of course, because uh, we're hosting our conference here. We have Highmark as our main sponsor, and um, it's really just a whole group of regular folks that came out to volunteer and give their time to put it together. So we're just excited. Once again, this is uh, a project we've been doing in each community that hosts our annual conference since 2010. So we're very excited to be able to do it. Um, one of the other key partners I should mention is the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, DCNR. Uh, they give a grant to the local community and the local community matches that grant uh, to help pay for the equipment that we're installing today. So the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania has been very supportive of this project through DCNR and we're excited that they continue to stand with us again this year. So a lot of partners but it all comes together in what we call build day when we're out here, even in the rain, putting together uh, this brand new playground for the kids in the Gettysburg area. I'm a member of the Chambersburg Borough Council and I came over here because it's a worthwhile uh, project as a, as a member of Borough Council and a member of the uh, Pennsylvania Municipal League to be here to support the, the Gettysburg Rec Department. Oh, it's wonderful. I, I'm so happy for this project. Um, the, the borough, of, or borough of Gettysburg is so fortunate to have this rec department and to have such volunteers locally and through the Municipal League to be here to help. The first thing I thought about were some uh, grandnephews and, nie and a niece who, who frequent the Gettysburg parks and our oh boy are they going to have fun on this, this at the apparatus, the slide, the monkey bars. It was made for kids. I'm in this position to serve, and uh, this gives us an extra opportunity to serve our host community, to come and do a project for them uh, that will enhance the community. Frankly, uh, my, my, my opinion is if we're not doing something that enhances our community, we're probably not doing enough. So anytime I can help uh, and serve somewhere, I certainly appreciate it, uh, appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, I helped uh, with assembly uh, and moving concrete uh, to the work site. Uh, those are the two jobs that have taken up most of my time. The Business Leaders Network are a group of business partners that work with the league year-round. Uh, they're not just involved at the conference, but they help do training and seminars, a wide variety of topics from financial management, uh, auditing, to uh, running your community more efficiently with best practices. All of these things are, are part of what the Business Leaders Network does, so they're great partners. Uh, they do contribute to the league, they're the highest contributors to our league. But uh, we're very excited that they do far more than that, that they help local officials make sure they have up-to-date information on a whole host of areas for running their municipal government. So the business leaders are terrific partners, and it's year-round, uh, not just during our annual conference. Go to our website, 
uh, www.pml.org. Contact anybody on there in the, the various departments, and we'll be glad to help.